Welcome back everybody and we're here with another video today. This is going to be building off my blog article which the link is in the description below if you want to check it out. It's just another detailed analysis of the same concept but maybe from a slightly different perspective with a few diagrams. So if you're more of a reader, check out the blog article. It's on Medium um, so it's completely free. If you like the blog article, I'm going to just be posting tactical content on Medium from now on. So if you're into that, um, don't forget to follow me on Medium um, because there'll be a lot more tactical concepts and analysis coming your way. So be sure to check that out. But today's video is going to be talking about creating a back three and doing this in many different ways, maybe some untraditional ways, some, some new ways that we can look at, and pretty much just prioritizing creating a back three structure in possession so we have access in each of these central corridors. So that'll be the starting point, and that's our goal for today and obviously there's a lot of different different qualities when building with a back three so just keep that in mind as well so some teams as a base like to build with a back three to again give them access to passing options from each of these central corridors so the first way i want to talk about is an asymmetric back four so when doing this it's usually a fullback, and that's what we're going to talk about first. So the, the asymmetric back three using the fullback, which we have here, and then our opposite fullback. And one thing to be sure of, when we do use a back three, whether it's asymmetric fullbacks or Salida La Volpiana, either way, oftentimes the, the remaining fullback will occupy the exterior wide corridor and now the winger will play more into the half space or just on the interior part of the wide corridor. So from here on the weak side, we just have our lone winger occupying the wide area. So now with this simply asymmetric back four, we have our fullback dropping deeper and now we can even highlight the three players and this often suits the qualities of the fullback better. So one example of this is when Laporte plays on the left fullback position. In possession, he often drops as a left-sided wide central defender. And this suits his qualities on the ball, his physical qualities, and the fact that he's left-footed gives him a big advantage for building from the back. So just wanted to mention that here. And then now we also, another benefit of this is that we have our mid midfield shape intact. So we have our midfield three who aren't, who aren't displaced through this movement. So, and then as well with our wingers and our front three. So the only players rotating are the back four. And so now we can see the asymmetry here after the player goes, I'm actually gonna make that yellow arrow just to separate it so there's no confusion. So now we highlight the back four and it's asymmetry here. So just want to show you that quick. And now we can talk about creating a back three using asymmetry and the central defender. So this is a bit different concept. I haven't heard anyone else talk about it. It's something I just thought up because nowadays we often see Jordan Henderson, Fabinho, uh, even Fernandinho a little bit. They've all played in the central defense role due to injuries of the team. So because of this, you think of them in possession and their natural positions, their most effective position as the holding midfielder. So for here, if we had, let's say, if we had... Fernandinho, for example, and I know he doesn't doesn't play on a team that's colored red. He plays for Manchester City, but we can call this player Fernandinho. So if Fernandinho is playing in a team and he's playing central defense in the defensive phase, this might not suit his qualities the best. So again, we have our back four, and then we can see see how we can use. 
Fernandinho's qualities as a pivot in the midfield rather than as a central defender. So here we can then just manipulate our back four, cause a rotation. So on the ball, the ball will be circulated. The players will shift together much like they do in the, uh, in the defensive phase. And Fernandinho will simply jump. And this could be situational. It could be just the cue of winning and structuring possession to Fernandinho jumping into the midfield. And now we have our wingers intact creating width. And now we have fullbacks in the half spaces on the ball. And this also creates an interesting dynamic with the qualities of the fullback. Fullbacks are usually much more more vertical, meaning they go forward much more progressive. Um, we see the qualities of fullbacks are much different from central defenders. So this can create interesting dynamics in the build-up phase. They might be more likely to progress via dribbling into the midfield third um, and breaking the press that way. But now we have Fernandinho in his pivot role, so we can highlight this structure now. We still have our three defenders, but now our asymmetric back four looks like this. And our midfield shape then looks a little asymmetric as well. So just a, another thing to think about. And the other thing I wanted to mention here is the possibility we see teams like Holstein Kiel and Atalanta do a lot with the center backs rotation, but rather than starting this position, Fernandinho might start deeper, and the fullbacks might also start a little deeper. So two deep fullbacks, just a little bit deeper, almost creating asymmetry. The wingers can stay wider because of how the, the ending structure will look, and now our weak side holding midfielder is there. So when the ball is played wide, the defense will go and press. Maybe the forward will be a little bit disconnected because of the positioning of our central midfielder, our number six. The teams will shift across, creating their pressing. And now, instead of Fernandinho, Staying here, he can then jump into the midfield, and while the team shifts to press, the team in possession can now go forward, come inside, and create structure this way. So just a few things to think about, not a perfect example, but just wanted to for that to be, be an option, think a little differently. It's always good to question um, things and try and stretch the stretch the limits of what we think about when when especially when in the possession of the ball but that's how the game is progressed just trying to stretch um, how we normally think about the asymmetric back four and creating uh, a three-man back line so that was the reason behind that just something I thought of uh, if you guys like it drop in the comments below um, tell me what you think. If it won't work, tell me what you think. I'm not saying it will, not saying it won't. Just another option, variation. So, and now, so moving on, we've covered the asymmetric back four, and now we can cover Salida La Volpiana. And we are going to do this with a double pivot, and we're going to have our fullback screening width for this example to better, to to use more coherence within the team's offensive phase. And I'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. All right, so here we are. And now there's gonna be three types of rotation. There's gonna be a strong side rotation, which means the ball is on one side and the central midfielder will drop towards the circulation of the ball. And then the weak side, which will be the ball will be on one side as it is here and the player will drop opposite side to the ball or where to the ball is going, so opposite. And then finally, there'll be the classic example of the player dropping between the two center defenders and now creating a back three that way. So the first one 
we're going to look at the strengths and weaknesses. So the first one is the weak side circulation. So one defender is in the central corridor protecting against a possible defensive transition and the ball is circulated to the wide center back. So this is the cue then for our holding midfielder to drop to the weak side and what this does is when the team goes to shift over they're going to shift when they shift trying to make it as realistic as possible now the player on the weak side is free in more time and space than he normally would be so from here the half space is open our target for progression and now the ball is shifted quickly again and he starts progression and so from here the wide midfielder will then most likely go to cover and stop the progression everyone else will start shifting and now the free man will be in the wide area and the ball just keep moving to the free man and progressing up the field so again just a quick recap weak side is taking advantage of the low density space that is opposite to the ball so really important to understand that and now we're going to look at the strong side rotation so this we'll look at it on the same side so the ball is coming and notice the the trigger so before the ball was moving away from the weak side now the ball is moving towards the weak side so when the ball goes from the number five center back to the four and the cue is then to pull the central midfielder out and now this can do two things so it might pull a defender further forward to cut off circulation um, and pre prevent progression or if this is the case then we can have either an inverted winger come narrow or an inverted fullback come maybe be more more likely to create a free man with the fullback because if the winger comes he'll attract the the opposing team's fullback but if the fullback comes from the wide area he will be most likely free so then this can create the chance for the diagonal pass positional superiority from the fullback and progression so the ball is played because the winger is stepping to press the ball is played and now he can launch the attack further forward so again he can be pulled away or if the defender doesn't jump he maintains his connection with his teammates the ball is played this can be bait to then again get the team to shift and depending on which side the 10 is it could be overloaded usually when the strong side uh, rotation happens it's towards the overloaded side so we'll put the 10 here um, just on this side to to overload the space between the lines and now we have just an asymmetric rondo structure through the wide area and the half space to then try and progress the ball via numerical superiority rather than positional so that was the strong side rotation and now we're going to end the video with classics Lita La Volpiana, six dropping in between two central center defenders. So here we are. And now the last one, I'm not going to get too in depth with this because it goes into more just the qualities of the back three. And that's not what this video is about. This video is about creating the back three using rotations and dynamic advantages. So there's two center backs and now Salido La Volpiana. The six simply drops between them. They fan out and either we can invert a fullback or we can invert our wingers to make space for the wingbacks now. So there's a bunch of different concepts that then go with this but it's just important that you keep in mind how and why you're um, carrying out these concepts because there are implications to them and it's not a copy-paste situation where 
each player might play these rotations a little bit differently. But again, I have a blog article about this. Um, if you want to check it out, it's on Medium. Uh, the link's in the description below. And uh, thanks everybody so much for watching. If you like the channel, like the video, uh, please subscribe. And thanks so much.